And math is hard because I am looking at my uploads. It is the 18th of August as I record this. To show you how far ahead I am, this is episode 62. We're in season 9. It's the first episode of season 9. I have episodes 43, 44. I have episode 43 ready to drop tomorrow. 44, 45, 46, and 47. I'm going to work on this weekend and get them in the loop for next week because I am in the middle of Oklahoma for work and will not have access to this particular machine. And then we'll pick up from there. But I am... I just, let's go. Math is hard. I can't remember what the heck episode I said this was. 62. So I'm 20 episodes ahead of where I'm posting. If I post four, we'll be generous and call it four episodes a week. That's five weeks of recording. I do about eight episodes. It's six, seven weeks for this eight, nine weeks for season 10. So nine weeks from now would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the middle of October. And you would assume SI would make an announcement by then about FM23 because it's October or November when it's going to come out. I would bet the beta is going to drop in October. So in looking at that last night, and I did look at this last night. I just failed to write any of it down. Typical Jellico move. We're going to do two more seasons here in Vardar. Now, an interesting thing happened. I got a job offer from Kaiserslautern, who are my German team. I lived there when my dad was in the Air Force. I saw games at the, at the stadium. They won after I left, of course. It seems to be a theme with a lot of sports teams that in places I live, but not here in the Midwest. I live in Kansas City. You know, go Chiefs. Um, we're going to do two more seasons. Season 9, Season 10. I talked about it last episode. I'm sure I'll talk about it going forward. Vardar have reached a point where we're just dominating the Macedonian League. The quality of players we have is that much better than our closest competitors. And while we may lose a couple of games, there's no way we're falling out of the top four unless Skopje gets hit by a meteor or something like that. Entirely possible, but not plausible because they haven't coded that into the game. And I really don't want to give them any ideas. So we're caught in this... I mentioned it before. We're better than everybody in North, in North Macedonia. We're as good as or better than a lot of teams that are in leagues as strong as ours. We're currently the 58th best team in the world, they say, or at least in rankings. We went up to 58. The league went up to 37. So we're improving there. It's just getting any sort of European Cup win is going to take a minor miracle anytime in the near future. It's at least a three to five, seven-year project if I'm going homegrown, developed talent. Because what's going to end up happening is what happened in the transfer window. And we'll, talk, we'll take a look at that right now. I have to change my background here real quick. We'll take a look at the release players here first. Emil Abaz left. He did not want to sign with us. He's still a midfielder. He still does not want to sign with us. And that's fine. I have plenty of attacking midfield depth. Petroski left. Ruskovsky left. Alioski left. Petroski, Mitreski, Skandari, Rakoski, and Luffy all left. Anybody with a number and a letter after their name came through on the youth intake, and they obviously did not develop. You know, at the time, Pepe Alaske looked like a, a B-class player. He was one-star or half-star current ability, and probably four-star potential ability, and he just, he never got anywhere near it. Now, that could be for a variety of things. I suspect a lot of it is the fact that I didn't train him all that well, and he didn't get a lot of playing, and, and the playing time he got was on the under-18 squads. He did go out on loan, and he was okay at Kozov, but they're a second-league squad, and he's probably second-league capable. On the free transfers, Boban Domofsky went to Gostovar on a free. On the loan deals, 
Uh, Sasko Jovanov went out on loan. Um, Victor Masevsky, Marjan Pavlevsky, Nikola Vukovsky. Those three went out to my affiliates. Nikola Petreski went to Rabbit Nikki. Mitrov went to Tethix. Uh, Goran Spakovsky went to Besa. Uh, Marjan Fazilu, Fazlu also went to Orid. Um, they're just the youth players. I want to get more playing time. They'll, they'll probably never see first team playing time here, but I, I think they have the. I think they all have the the potential to be sold for at least a little bit of money going forward. As an example, they could be like Goran Dimitrov, who was a 26B player who went to Scandija for 80,000 euros. Or Gerse Moreno, who went to Mladost in the Serbian League for 50,000 euros. Now, Morena, I was a little bit back and forth on, but I came to the conclusion that he just wasn't good enough for the squad. Yes, he's an okay defensive left back. Yes, he's an okay defensive right back. But he doesn't really excel at either. Physically, he's good. Mentally, he has some very good attributes. Technically, he is lacking for that position. A six crossing, a seven first touch, eight heading uh, for a six foot one guy is not good, especially when he has 15 jumping reach. His marking and his tackling, they're adequate. But for the level of competition we're playing at, especially in Europe, they're subpar. So, And I, I have better options there. So on the ends, Goran Markovsky comes to us from VFL Boca, a midfielder who can also play in Vads mid. This will come in handy later. You'll see why. Um, physically, he's tiny. He's five foot six, two jumping reach. Physically, he's okay for someone his size, I think. Mentally, he's pretty solid. I mean, there's no real weaknesses in his game there unless you want to count a seven positioning, a seven concentration, and a bravery. And while those are low, there's certainly not a one, two, or three. Technically, he needs some help, but his first touch is nice, his long shots are nice, his passing is nice, his technique is also very good. Those four things there are one of the big reasons I signed him. Nikola Petreski comes to us from Rabbit Nikki, 1.7 million. I said, hey, what would it cost to get him? They said this. I said, sold. Plays a midfielder and a defensive mid, can also play advanced, or can also play midfielder on the right and wing back. I doubt we'll be seeing him there anytime soon. Um, physically, he's pretty solid. Again, another one of those guys who's five foot six and just you know, not all that physically. Well, physically present is wrong. He's good for his size. You know, the six jumping reach and and six heading that you're going to get that. I mean, but he's not going to be in the scrum in front of the uh, goal, anyways. Mentally, he has some really good mentals. There's no real weaknesses there except for his flair. He's a midfielder, so I'm not really concerned about that. Technically, okay first touch, okay marking, okay tackling, okay technique. He needs to improve there. But he will be part of the midfield rotation. And then Boban Tosevsky is back. Um, he went to Slavia Prague, did not get a lot of playing time there, was unhappy. I turned around to them and said, Hey, what would it cost to get him back? They said 2.1 million euros. I said, I have a 12 million euro transfer budget. And I, I'm, the, the, you know, the only way I'm going to blow that is if somehow Dejan Kulisevsky agrees to come to Vardar, which isn't happening. So, or maybe El Shafel Moss. That's not happening either. Um, what's his name? Darko Cherlinov, the partisan, wanted to leave and get more first team playing time somewhere. Absolutely refused to even think about coming to Vardar. But he went to Slavia Prague. He was back on loan with us. And then he spent... All, that, all of last season on the B squad. Didn't get hardly any playing time. Was unhappy about it. I brought him back because we're tending to... Because it's mostly... I'm not going to blame Carlos, but he was a huge influence on this. We're going mostly with a more midfielder predominant uh, formation. It's probably going to be this more often than not, but we're also going to have this in our back pocket as well. Sevsky likes to put target forward, so we're going to make him a target forward there. So, but the nice thing is, I've got enough depth that Pandev, Tusha, and Ovevsky can play on the vent on the left. Demi, Todorov, and Tusha can play on the right. Todorov, Ilevsky, and Demi can play in the middle. For the midfielders, Todorov, Pandev, Carlos, Tusevsky, Ilyevsky, and you go down a couple more players, I would be comfortable starting there. Bryn Marion for a couple of games. If I had to, uh, Philip Matev. You know, I've got some youngsters coming up that I have real high hopes for. We could be better at defender. And I'm still looking for a defender to come in. But the guys we have, they can play more than one position more often than not. They're good players. For the level of football we're playing at, 
they're good players. Carlos Garcia is improving by leaps and bounds. He is now four star current ability, four star potential ability. He has, you know what? We'll take we'll take a look at him here. So he'll turn 17 here in a couple of months. So the other player I'm still keeping an eye on is uh, Giannakis Charlubas because he is getting close to getting his citizenship, but he's also getting close to being older than 18, which means he might not be able to play for us in that time. Schedule-wise, it's been interesting. I got one friendly scheduled against Locomotiva. I had another friendly scheduled for prior to this, but then I complete. I don't know what happened. So 7-1... 7-11, Champions Cup, let me pull this out here real quick. Champions Cup path first qualifying. So if I go back a season, 7-5, and then 7-1, 7-8. Yeah, I just, I had a brain cramp, Pivcac era, whatever you want to call it. I scheduled a friendly for right around there, and I had to cancel it because the HB game came up. HB is Hanvar Bolt Flag. I'm totally pronouncing that wrong, but they're a Faroese team. And they were actually, they gave us a game the first time around, or the second time around. Well, the first time around, we beat them 2 0. They drew with us 2 all. And I didn't really play my strongest squad there. We lost to Locomotiva in the friendly there. I brought them in just to make a little bit of money, bring a bigger squad in to see how we do. They scored an extra time against a fairly rotated squad. So I wasn't too broken about that. Vikinger was a really good game. We drew with them 3 all in the first match. Uh, Tusha a goal, Tusevsky a goal, Olevsky a goal, right after they went ahead, scoring in the 69th minute. Um, statistically speaking, we were both pretty even. And then we beat them 3-0 in the home game. Then we played Valorenga. I was just, I was in a groove. I didn't realize this was the European game until I was actually in it. They're a Norwegian squad. They're pretty good. They're pretty tough. And we beat them 2-0. Thanks to goals by Bozanowski and Basevski at the end of the match. Uh, the issue is, four days later, we played Belasica, and we absolutely thumped them 6-0. We played the 4-3-1-2 here. Um, Noveski had three goals. Pilevski scored. Pasevski scored. Demi scored. And today, literally three days later, we're playing Vla uh, Valarenga away, and the squad is... So we're playing the 4-3-1-2 today, and the team is absolutely knackered. I just, you know, Pandas at 78%. I can bring on Markoski for him. Gabriel's at 81%. I don't I don't want to start him. But Georgi Boznowski is also at 81%. I would rather start him. I don't want Carlos playing defensive back. Markoski would rather be a ball winning mid. I can work with that. Or I've got it. Well, wait a minute. Where, where's Giannis? Giannis played the youth game. He's at 66%. Do I have anybody I would trust? Stolowski? No. Because he is like 15 years old. Yeah, I'm not starting a 15-year-old against Valoranga. I'm not that desperate. Yeah. Oh. Pasevsky's at 81%. Demi is at 95%. Tush is at 95%. Lieski's at 84%. Markoski's at 97. We'll start him instead. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think this is the only live comp we're going to look at today. We'll get to the end of the transfer window, see who we're playing next sort of thing. I'll talk a little bit more about the save as well. So we got Grosinowski and goal. Tosevsky, Bozanowski, Bozanowski, and Stamkov as the defensive back four. Markoski, Todorov, and Tosevsky as the midfielders. Tosevsky, what does Tosevsky want to be? What's Todorov want to be? Todorov can be... Oh, you know what? We're going to put Tosevsky there. We're going to make Todorov a box-to-box. -box. Uh, Markovsky at the attacking mid, and Tusha and Demi up top as the strikers. Demi doesn't really like being a target forward, though. Deep line forward on attack. And I'm just going to have to pay attention to the guys and make sure like they don't die on the field of exhaustion. So after talking with the maker of the scan, I figured out what was going wrong up here. It was a issue with the skin itself. I have a 2550 by 1440 monitor, and the skin isn't exactly designed for that. There's panels that I can add, but for some reason, this does not scale. So like if this is 
at 100%. This is 1920 by 1080 at 100%. If I was to zoom this in, it would literally zoom it in. It wouldn't scale it. I think there's a lot going on behind the scenes that you could probably figure out a way to solve it, but this late in the skinning game in FM22, I don't know it's worth it. And I can play on this at this particular um, resolution. I'm not too bothered by it. Pog picks up the ball. Bombs it down the field. Uting gets it to McAllister. One on one goes to Noski, and he gets enough on it to apps to just absolutely misdirect it. That was a bit of luck. McAllister sends it in. Kalishnikov. It's kind of a, well, it's not an unfortunate name, but everybody knows who you are. Quiet game so far. We've had three shots, one on target. They've had six and four. Barros picks up the ball. Borjal, Edvardson. Top of the box feeds Makarski, and he slots it past. It's just before a half, too. Grozanowski wanted to leave last season, but there weren't any takers. He's got a 3.2 million euro release clause. I'm sure there's teams out there that would pay it, but they didn't want to pay it last transfer window, so he's happy to stay here, and I'm happy to keep him. If we can keep him for the next two seasons, I'll be... I'll be more than happy. Bozanowski's down to 61%. Okay. We're going to move Stamkov over and bring on Babich. 55 minutes in, first highlight of the half. Makarski, Yordahl, Pereira. Crosses the field. Tosevsky heads it down, but it goes right to Thomason. Matthews picks it up. Gets it out. Sorensen, all alone on the right, gets the ball. Knocked away. Barnes, Barros rather, picks it up for Valarenga. Pereira, left side of the box, gets it to Matthews. Sorensen, right side of the box. Feeds Matthews, crosses it. Makarski couldn't get to it in time. Back to Pereira. Makarski, front of the box. Knocked away by Bozanowski after Grozanowski got a hand on it. But here's where things are going to get interesting. It's 65 minutes in. Tosevsky's knackered, and I really don't have a replacement for him. I'm going to bring Pandev in and push him up so he's playing his wingback role. Bozanovsky to Todorov. Back to Stamkov. Markovsky to Sevsky. Out to Babich on the right. Babich driving forward, crosses the line. Bombs it for Demi. He chests it down, crosses it. Markovsky's there, puts it away. That was nice. Looked like Demi wasn't going to get there at the for a moment. Nice looping pass down the field. Over the top. Demi chests it down. That didn't look right. I suspect that's one of those instances where the game couldn't accurately show what happened there. Because the defender looked like he got all the way turned around. McAllister to Beal off the throw-in. Back to Sorensen. Sorensen to McAllister. Top right corner of the box. Murkowski's there, but Grozdanowski gets a hand on it. And knocks it out of balance. It's going to be a corner kick for Valarenga. Matthews. Looping ball in and it's knocked away. That's the highlight. Stamkov to Markovsky. To Stamkov. Markovsky. Markovsky to Stamkov. To Sevsky. To Markovsky. Bangs it all the way back. Holy cow, are they pressing. Grosinowski finds Tusha. Tusha drops it off to Pandev. Pandev holds it up. Back to Markovsky. To Pandev. Markovsky. Back heel pass. Pandev crosses it in, but Sorensen knocks it away. Goes up to Uting. To Matthews. Matthews crosses Murkarski, and he puts it away. That was nice. I'm going to get Tosevsky off and bring on Gabriel. And what I should probably do when it starts up again is drop the lines back. Matthews, corner kick in, knocked away. Veal's going to run the carom down, hopefully. Matthews, looping pass. Babish just bombs it forward. Grosinowski off the goal kick. Bozanowski. Bozanowski. Bombs it down the field. Demi's not going to get there. Pereira is. He gets it to Kalishnikov, up to Bjordal. Bjordal bombs it forward, but Babish is going to pick that up. 
gets it to Grosinowski. He sends it the other way. Demi wins the header, but no one there to help him. Thomason sends it back to Haug. Haug gets it to Yuting. He drops it off to Matthews, feeds McAllister. That is mildly frustrating. Because it's going to go to extra time now because the wiggles don't count anymore. I swear if they score here, Sorensen crosses it in. Yuting can't get a handle on it. Matthews crosses it towards Morkarski. Pereira picks it up instead. Left side of the box. He beat Bozanovsky on the header. That is annoying. Could be worse. We could be Linfield. They lost to Donovan Bucharest, you know, goals on 120th and 121st minute. But jeez. We're playing Linfield, who just got absolutely rogered by Bucharest. That is annoying as heck. 2-0 up and we lose on aggregate 4-1. So we got the Euro Cup playoff. First leg. Play off first leg in the group stage. So if we win, we go to the group stage. Okay. Well, we got our work cut out for us. In the meantime, I got a bunch of tired players as well. So yeah, it's going to be interesting, but that is why I get paid the big bucks to figure this out. And figure it out, we will. So we're going to come back with the games at Linfield. We're going to play Gostabar offline. The next episodes will be the Linfield games. Let me save this here real quick. And, um, yeah, that's the plan going forward. Um, I haven't been able to devote as much time to the saves as I want to do to work and stuff like that. I'm hoping that kind of evens itself out because we're usually not as busy during the winter and springtime. Um, I have my saves planned out for next year. One of them is a fairly standard beta test. You pick a team, you see how well you do with them for seven years. And the next one is a bit ambitious. I'm creating a club. And we're going to see how that works out because I've never done it before. I thought about doing a journeyman again, but I I don't know. I I like doing journeymans by myself. The last time I did a journeyman, the, the Eastern European journeyman, I liked it, but near the end, it was getting to be a bit of a grind. I don't know if that was because of me or the fact that I'd been doing it for a while or the fact that I was, you know, just busy with working, you know, a bunch of outside influences and things like that. So we'll wait and see. So I've got an offline save I'm doing as well. I mean, I'm going to be in the middle of Oklahoma with not a lot of great internet. So what I did, I mentioned, well, I may not, I can't remember if I mentioned this or not. I had a job interview offer from Kaiser Slaughter last year. And I created a save off of that and went interviewed and took the job. So I'm now the head coach of Kaiser Slaughter after nine years of Vardar. So that's what I'm going to be playing offline. Kaiser Slaughter, and I lived there for a couple of years. My dad was stationed there when he was in the Air Force. And, um, they're an interesting squad. I did a save with them last year as well. So they're they're an interesting team. They've been relegated. They went down to the third division. They're up, back up in the second. They've got some uh, financial issues. We don't, however. We're doing really, really well. So, I mean, $6.9 in the transfer budget still. We're guaranteed 6.1 next year. We still got, what was it, 50,000 euros of wiggle room in the transfer budget. So we're doing fine. So off to Linfield, and then the group stages, either here or in the Euro Cup. We'll figure it out. That said, if you did like what you've seen and heard, please have a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, questions, criticisms, or comments. Leave those down below. I will answer them as fast as I can. My name is FM Jellicoe. I thank you for watching.